We're up to chapter 12 of George's Marvelous Medicine. I have a suggestion before you start. I suggest you push the pause button and you try and draw or write a list of all the ingredients that George's dad has to get when he goes to collect all the ingredients. Remember he had to go to the vet and get pills and tablets. What does he have to get from mummy's bedroom and from the laundry? So he has to go to the shops and buy some more. So you might want to pause now and sketch or write all the ingredients. Okay, now I'm going to start. Marvelous medicine number two. I guess this is their second attempt. They were in the kitchen now and the big saucepan was on the stove and all the things Mr. Cranky had brought were all lined up at the sink. Come on, my boy. Which one did you put in first? This one, he said, and it was the golden gloss hair shampoo. Now the toothpaste, George went on, and the shaving soap and the face cream, and remember the nail polish. Keep at it, boy, cried his dad. He was dancing around the kitchen. Keep putting them in. Don't stop. Don't pause. Don't hesitate. You hear that? He said, don't stop. Don't pause. Don't hesitate. Keep putting them in. It's a pleasure, my dear fellow, to watch my son working. One by one, George poured and squeezed things into the saucepan. You know how some things you can pour in like a liquid, but some things are in a bottle and you have to squeeze them. So they poured them and squeezed them. With everything so close at hand, so George could just grab everything. He didn't have to keep going around the house. It was done quite quickly. When it was done, the saucepan didn't somehow seem to be quite full as it was the first time. Now, what did you do next, said Mr. Cranky? Did you stir it? I boiled it, but not for long. Do you remember what else he did? Tell your neighbor, there was something else he did. He didn't just boil it. He used to stick and did something. That's right, he stirred it. So Mr. Cranky lit the gas under the saucepan and George stirred the mixture with that big wooden spoon. A wooden spoon is a spoon you don't use to eat, but it's a much bigger one. Yeah. Oh, hang on, I'll get a wooden spoon. This is a wooden spoon. It's made of wood and it's really big and it doesn't get hot when you're stirring things. So he used the wooden spoon. It's all brown enough, George, George said. Ah, oh, wait a minute, I know what I've forgotten. I think you know too, right? Yeah. What? Tell me quick, because if we've forgotten one tiny thing, it won't work, at least not the same way. Brown paint, that's what I've forgotten. Mr. Clinny, Cl Mr. Killy Cranky shot out of the house into this car like a rocket. He sped down to the village, bought the paint and rushed back again. He opened the can in the kitchen and handed it to George. George poured the paint into the saucepan. Ah, that's better, said George. That's more like the right colour. It's boiling, it's boiling, George. Is it ready yet? It's ready, said George. Mm, at least I think so. Right, shouted Mr. Cranky. Let's test it. Let's give it to a chicken. My heaven's alive. Why don't you calm down a bit? Mrs. Cranky said, coming into the kitchen. Calm down, said Mr. Cranky. You expect me to calm down when here we are mixing up the most marvelous medicine ever discovered in the history of the world? Come along, George. Dip a cupful out of the saucepan Get a spoon and we'll give it to the chicken just to make absolutely certain that we've got the correct mixture. Outside in the yard, there were several chickens that hadn't had any of George's marvelous medicine. Number one, they were pecking about in the dirt in the silly way that chickens do. George crouched down, holding onto a spoonful of the marvelous medicine. Number two, come on, chicken, he said. Good chick, 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 chick. Hmm. Oh dear. Is that what they were hoping for? Oh 
A white chicken with black specks on its feathers looked up at George. It walked over. Pick! The effect of medicine number two had on this chicken was not the same as the effect produced on med medicine number one. But it was very interesting. Whoosh! With the chicken. And it shot six feet up in the air. That's taller than me. A little bit taller than me. And came down again. Then sparks came flying out of its beak, bright yellow sparks of fire, as though someone was sharpening a knife on its tummy. Then its legs began to grow longer. Its body stayed the same size, and two thin legs got longer and longer and longer, and still... But that's a bit pointless, right? Because he's trying to get giant eggs, and its body is the same, but its legs are long. What's happening to it? cried Mr. Killy Cranky. Something's wrong, said George. The legs went on growing and more, the more and more they grew, the higher grew, sorry. The legs went on growing and the more they grew, the higher up into the air went the chicken's body. Ugh. When the legs were about 15 feet long, you know you have a ruler in the class? Each ruler is called a foot. That's a measurement, a foot. 15 rulers high. When the legs were about 15 feet long, they stopped growing. The chicken looked perfectly absurd with these long legs, but this just ordinary body perched up on top of it. It looked like a chicken on stilts. Oh, my sainted aunt, said Mr. Killy Cranky, we've got it wrong. The chicken's no good to anyone. It's all legs. No one wants chicken legs. Hmm. I must have left something out, said George. I know you left something out, said Mr. Cranky. Pink boy, what did you leave out? Ah, I've got it, said George. That was quick, said his dad. What was it? Flea powder for dogs. Ah, you mean you put flea powder in the first one? Yeah, I put a whole carton of it in. Well, then that's the answer. Wait a minute. Did we have shoe brown shoe cleaner, shoe polish on the list? We did not, said Mr. Cranky. I used that too. No wonder it went wrong, said Mr. Cranky. And he went running to the car and drove quickly down to the village to buy those two things. Is that everything? Chapter 13. Marvellous medicine number three. Here it is, said Mr. Cranky, rushing into the kitchen. One carton of flu, flu, flea powder and some shoe polish. George poured them both in. Stir it up, George, said Mr. Cranky. Give it another boil. We've got it this time. I bet we've got it. After marvellous medicine number three had been boiled and stirred, George took a cupful out into the yard to try it on another chicken. Mr. Cranky ran after him, flapping his arm and hopping with excitement. Come and watch us turning an ordinary chicken into a lovely great big one that lays eggs as large as a football. Well, I hope it does better than last time, said Mrs. Cranky. Come on, chicken, said George, holding out a spoonful of medicine. Chick, 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 chick. This time, a magnificent male chicken with a scarlet comb on its head, you know how chickens have that red bit at the top? Came stepping over. The cockerel, that's the name of a male chicken, looked at the spoon and of course, it went pick. Okay, now we're gonna pause it and I want you to decide, what, if you were the author, what would you do next? Okay, so push pause or I'll just wait. Okay, we've unpaused now. Cock -a -doo -doo -doo, squawked the cockerel, shooting up in the air and coming down again. Watch him now, said Mr. Cranky. Watch him grow. Any moment, he's going to start getting bigger and bigger. Any moment. Mr. Crilly Cranky and Mrs. Cranky and little George stood in the yard, staring at the chicken, and it stood quite still. It did look as though it might have had a headache. What's happening to its neck? <gasps> It's getting 
longer. Oh no. I'll say it's getting longer. Last time it was the legs. Now this time it's the neck. No one wants to eat a chicken with a long neck. You can't eat a chicken's neck. But it was an extraordinary sight. The cockerel's body hadn't grown at all, but the neck was now six feet long. That's six of your rulers long. All right, George, Mr. Cranky said. What else have you forgotten? Hmm, I don't know. Do you remember? Oh, yes, you do, Mr. Cranky said. Come along, boy, think. There's probably just one vital thing missing and you've got to remember it. Ah, I put an engine oil from the garage. Did you have that on your list? Eureka, said Mr. Cranky. That's the answer. How much did you put in? Half a bucket. Mr. Cranky ran to the garage, found that, and some antifreeze, and sloshed it in. Antifreeze, if you live in a country where it's really snowy or icy, you put that into the car and so that all the water in the car doesn't freeze. Okay, now, so he's now put in everything. Do you think he's put in everything? Hmm. Let's stop there. And next time we can read chapter 14. Maybe we'll re read the rest of the story.